I am so excited to have the amazing Baker with us today. Thank you so much for being a part of this moment. <laughs> I'm blushing. <laughs> and you are very welcome. So, Ace, tell us, tell us, who are you? Um, <laughs> good question. <laughs> I'm still uh, trying to figure out what I'm going to be when I'm grown up. I grew up in Hamburg, Germany. I was born in a city called Rheinbeck in the suburbs of Germany, and my mom was German. My dad was West African, and I went to school in Germany. I played basketball all the way to the up to the youth, youth national team. I was a rapper in Germany, so I did all kinds of things. I also hosted the uh, street basketball tour, the national street basketball tour for Adidas and a and a home improvement store called Obi, which is like a Home Depot. Okay. So they had the big parking lots where we could set up the basketball courts. So that's what I did until I moved here. And I think I moved here when I was 24. Okay. And then I just wanted to be in the entertainment business as I stopped being a rapper in Germany. <laughs> and so um, I took a couple of classes at UCLA's extension program, which was super fun. Randy Jackson, I don't know if you've seen American Idol. Yeah, but, I think uh, some of us have heard of that show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Randy Jackson was one of my first teachers there. So oh, wow. Yeah, it was cool. Wow. I think it must have been on the first or second season of American Idol when we had little <laughs> girls follow him to class and wanting to audition in front of our class, which was oh, super wow. fun. Yeah, and so then I came here, and then I didn't like the way hip-hop went anymore. I didn't like the lyrics. I wasn't feeling the good vibes of the 90s and early 2000s and it all became a little too uh, too exhausting for me and so i left and i always taken an interest in finance and investments because i grew up with a single mom who just wasn't the best at managing money mm. and some decisions are driven by that right yes so I wanted to put myself into a spot always where I didn't necessarily have to make compromising decisions because of my financial status. <laughs> but yeah, I ended up graduating from San Diego State University with a degree in business. And then I did kind of marketing and real estate and finance all along the way. But I wear many different hats today. One of them is my day job is I work as a wealth manager and I help clients with planning and streamlining their finances so they can get their goals accomplished. And then secondly, I own an apartment building with a partner and that is, you know, my side hustle. And then thirdly, I um, have a YouTube channel that deals with personal development and especially for people of color. So I feel like in that niche are not enough resources and I hope to bring a little bit of light and energy to that space and hopefully a couple of good ideas that my viewers or my community can take along. And why is that important to you? What made you decide to start a YouTube channel? A mm, few things. I see YouTube as a way to build my personal brand and platform. I see it as a way to help people. I see it as a way to also supplement the income that I'm making from the apartment building so I can ultimately be financially free and also emotionally free because all of us who go to a job maybe from eight to six because I think nine who works nine to five these no days one. right no um, you know with a phone in your hand and a laptop I feel like work almost never sleeps for a lot of us and that's good to fulfill basic needs and some of us really are passionate about their work and I think for me personally, life is bigger than just a job. So I'd like to explore this world more. And I think YouTube gives creators a great platform to share what they're about and, you know, build a business around that. You're right. And things have changed because I think if you have always been in a traditional job, uh, you might not be as aware of what opportunities exist that all can be found via YouTube and all of social media, which we know is Absolutely. there, but we might not actually see the opportunities. But going back a little further, tell us about your your history. 
So when I finished college, I looked around and ended up landing a job first with Washington Mutual. And they had, especially in, in California as a whole, a very strong footprint. So we were probably the number one multifamily bank, bank that, lent, that loaned money on multifamily properties. And that was interesting because with a team of five at the time, we financed more than a quarter billion in um, real estate in a, in a year. So that means, you know, I've seen a lot of transactions. And that was helpful because I got to work with some of the smallest and largest investors. And then I took a promotion and moved to Long Beach. And when that didn't work out, I started a startup to get closer to Germany. The business was in Germany. So, yeah. And there's more, of course. Okay. And what happened with the startup? That was very interesting. I, first of all, had some trepidation about not being qualified to start a startup. Right. A lot of people feel that way. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And when you're coming out of a very traditional banking job that is, in my opinion, not so creative, there's a lot that goes into running a firm and starting a startup and raising money. But luckily, we have a very good startup community here in San Diego. And so I did some boot camps where you get together with like five different people in a group that say that all have a slightly different skill set. Maybe one is technical, maybe one is business, and then we have some creatives. And so we were grouped into these groups, and then we were supposed to pitch a business idea that we would execute in one weekend and you know get, get a minimum viable product together. And so that's how I learned some of the bearings of how to, how to do a startup, right? And luckily for me, I got accepted to the startup leadership program here in San Diego and that helped a ton too. But the goal with a startup was one to be working with people I can choose to work with rather than a, a group of people that you're plugged into when you're working for a big corporation. Not to say that you can't make great friends, but I wanted to have a little bit more control of who I'm or over, who I'm working with, and who I'm doing business with, right? And so that was interesting because I went into business with my oldest friend thinking we had the same hustle and the same ambition, but that didn't pan out that way. But part of the reason also was I wanted to live closer to Europe or back in Germany, or at least build a bridge where I could live in both countries because I do have lifelong relationships there and I like the lifestyle in Europe a little bit better than I like it in the United States for the most part. Yes, we will talk about that too. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then what happened with the startup? Yeah, good question. <laughs> um it's actually very easy to understand the business model because a company, I think three years, two years after two years after we launched took exactly that business model. And I'm not suggesting they stole our idea, but they executed on exactly the same idea and very successfully and raised more money. The company's called Cameo and it's a platform or we build a platform where you could order video greetings or video messages from your favorite celebrity if they were on our platform with a number of characters, let's say two, 300 characters. And then part of the money, of course, that the fan would pay to get this video greeting from the celebrity. Part of the money would go to the celebrity, part to their favorite charity, and the rest to our firm. So it was a win-win, especially celebrities who have been sitting a while, let's say for shits and giggles, like a David Hasselhoff, right, who has still a big following but isn't really getting any action as an actor or much action as an actor anymore. A tool like that is perfect to monetize his following, right? And so I think we were years ahead of where this, this trend went. But ultimately, my partner and I didn't have the same value system and the same hustle and the same way we treat people. And that led to us eventually separating. And there was more. But I learned partnerships can be very tricky and difficult. And I learned also that I would not necessarily go into business with a person who has absolutely no business experience or doesn't have at least a little bit of a proven track record 
of being self-directed and working without a boss, right? Because some people... Discipline. Pe discipline, yeah. yeah. Discipline and systems and the willingness to learn, to never stop learning, right? While I was doing this startup leadership program, I was trying to teach him back what I learned in a couple of video calls during the week, and that's just not enough. It just doesn't cut it. So it wasn't the idea. The idea was phenomenal. Sure. A successful yep. idea. So what I want people to see here is that it wasn't that the idea mm -hmm. couldn't be successful. Absolutely. It's that the team wasn't in place. And if you're doing a partnership, they have to have the same level of passion, drive, and discipline. I couldn't agree more. That you have. And that you have skills that balance each other in different strengths so that you can come together and be a more solid team. And and that is, it sounds like the lesson that you learned in this experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and not everybody can be honest with themselves, right? Some people really want to do a startup, but then they realize how much work it is. And they're really more of a wantrepreneur, meaning somebody who wants to be in business but doesn't have the hustle and dedication that it takes to start a business, right? And sometimes it's not even that much. You can start some side hustles without putting in a lot of hours of work, but you do have to show up consistently and you do have to execute against your word and the commitments that you've made. And that just wasn't there in my partnership, so eventually just it just had to be dissolved. Or at least I had to I had to remove myself from that equation. Okay. Which was painful because it was my oldest friend and there were things that were just not so great. But a lot of lessons learned and also it's cool to see that this idea that we had turned into a company that had a ma market capitalization rate of more than a billion dollars, I believe it was last year. Wow. Mm-hmm. And that gives you a lot of tools and lessons along the way, because at the same yes. time, it might have been a nightmare to have had some success and then have him, you know, reveal all of his negative traits uh, along the way and cause more problems down the line. So mm -hmm. that it could have been a, you know, a blessing in disguise. Sometimes we don't see those things. No, I mean, like, happening. I certainly feel like, you know, we only have so much time in life and in every day. So who you spend your time with is so instrumental into where you, into determining where you go. And I certainly learned I just didn't need to spend much more time with that individual. And that's, you know, it's a little bit of a bitter pill to swallow. But when you spend 30 years with somebody, you know, there should be a very solid relationship in your life. Otherwise, you're leaning your ladder against the wrong wall or you're betting on the wrong horse or however you want to call it, right? Right, but it's also what you just said a little earlier about being willing to grow. Mm. Both of you have to be willing to grow and to learn and to have the same level of passion and discipline. I feel like that's so true for many, not only business partnerships, but also relationships. Oh, the relationships. No, because yeah. honestly, I yeah. believe like if you don't grow together, then you die together, right? There's not very much room in the middle there. Um, and if you are both on different tra trajectories, that will eventually lead to dissolving your relationship, is my opinion. Yeah, I agree with you. So I did a little research and... I watched a few videos. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> and you have been through a lot. You have been through a lot. Um, you know, that too. <laughs> we've all suffered from loss, and it can be devastating. And I just want to know, what has made you so resilient? First of all, I don't think I'm so resilient. Um, I think these ups and downs in life have had a profound impact on who I am. And I think if I could credit one thing to what you call resiliency, it is my friends. Without my friends, I don't think I'd be here anymore. I've had friends who, you know, when I wasn't doing so well, showed up for me, you know, even gave me money and said, hey, buy yourself a nice Chris or buy you and your daughters a nice Christmas present because I know you're not in a great financial spot and for that I'll let forever be grateful 
And so I do think, you know, my friends have, having the unconditional love of a handful of friends and then also my kids is something that I draw a lot of, not only love from, but I draw a lot of gratitude from. And it makes my life worth living. I love that. Thank you. And the other thing is with that, um, you have those relationships because of who you are. Mm, as a I person, agree. Right. I mean, not everyone is fortunate enough to have amazing friends. I have amazing friends too, and I love them dearly. Yeah. But a, a lot of that is you and what you have put into those relationships. Yes to have that come back to you. I would agree with that. So one of the things that I'm very mindful with is my time in general. It's very it's very simple the way I treat my time, right? I have to do my day job and function in order to pay a majority of my bills. However, once I'm not on the clock anymore, I am very mindful of how I spend my time. I believe it's better for me personally to be a creator than a consumer. And I like to invest in friendships over TV series with people or sports that I could watch on TV with people that I'll never build a relationship with. So I personally find it helpful then that I don't watch any TV other than an occasional movie or a show here and there. But that is by far not not even the weekly thing for me. I pick up the phone and I call my friends because a lot of them are in Europe and I like to maintain those relationships. I pick up my phone to call my friends all over the US. And now it's not only telephone calls. We are blessed with great technology so I can do video calls. I can even now as of two months or three months, I have the Ray-Ban Meta glasses. So if somebody calls me via WhatsApp, they can actually see in first person view what I'm seeing. So we can create some different uh, new experiences together. I mean, that's the best thing next to sitting here next to each other. You know, we were thinking about doing this remotely, but I just think the energy that comes out of sitting next to each other and the vibe is just way different than, you know, over a camera and a, you know, like, well, what do you call those yeah. rat cam and zoom meetings and all that i mean i love that lifestyle for a lot of corporate people but i try to meet my clients face to face whenever i can just because and my friends just because i think the energy is different right and we weren't even a hundred years none of us were sitting behind screens nine ten hours a day right. so i think that's something to be mindful for of right like we didn't have tvs we didn't have computers we didn't have we were outside more and i think i mean yes if we're not looking at what modern medicine did for us in general we were living a little bit more in tune with who we are as people who how we lived for millions of years as people or thousands of years as people so what differences have you noticed um you know you have that lens coming into the united states that you know what perspective do you have that you could share with us with that European lens of, you know, because life is different in Europe than it right. is here. I mean, I'm sure things have changed, and but there is a different feeling of what priorities are. At least that was my experience living in Europe. So yeah. what could you share with us? What things do you think people take for granted here or maybe um, no, things feel, you've observed? Absolutely. I feel it. I mean, a couple of things. Europe is not equal Europe. Germans are very different than Spaniards. I think, for example, Germans and Americans are more aligned than, let's say, a German and a Spaniard. Because in general, in both countries, Germany and the US, people work a lot. And Germans are, in general, probably a little bit more efficient at work and don't socialize as much as work at work and then go home sooner. But in Germany, when you start working, most people get at least four, five, six weeks of vacations that don't have to be earned, you know, as a monthly accrual. So there's a difference there. People travel more, people have more time to travel. It is more affordable to travel within Europe. It's comparable to traveling within the United States. You know, when you're flying from here to from San Diego to Las Vegas, you can get a round trip ticket at times for less than, I'd say, $200. Uh, 
So that's more akin to traveling in Europe. But in Europe, when you're leaving Germany and you're traveling to Spain, that's like going from San Diego to Texas or even, you know, or even a shorter distance. So that's a, that's a big difference. I think in general, people are a little bit better educated in Europe, the white masses, because neighborhood schools are not driven by the local tax funds. The system just works differently, right? Like, and so it doesn't, the, your education doesn't depend on living in a good area to get a good education, if that makes any sense. Yes. You know, the systems are changing too, especially in Germany, and not everything that glitters is gold. And, and I think in general, the educational system for the most part is free and it is, provides better opportunities for the broad masses than we have here. Students in general don't graduate with student loans from the university. If anything, they may have incurred expenses for their lifestyle, for living and existing if they just choose, chose not to work. But it's very unheard of that somebody graduates with $100,000 in student loans and starts their working career with this tremendous burden. That's a very American thing, and I think it's unfortunate. It is unfortunate. Yeah. Did you see any advantages that we have? In America? Uh, Absolutely. Business. It, I'm sorry. No, no, no. It, did you see any advantages here that perhaps we take for granted? So... I don't know if many people know this, but business is less regulated than in most other first world countries. And so as a businessman, you can execute faster. For example, when I opened up my LLC in Germany, it took two weeks. We had to have $25,000 in reserves with the bank in order to open it up. And... It was a number of attorneys working on the draft documents. Now, in America, the same LLC, I think it takes maybe four to six hours if you're using something like LegalZoom, and you're done. You don't need to have any reserves. It's a very easy and streamlined process, which makes getting a business off the ground faster. There's just more red tape in Europe, I would say. So that's a huge advantage. And then secondly, America is a country of immigrants, so I feel like when it comes to creativity and coming up with new original ideas, America is one of the best countries to be because if we are somehow synergetic, we really can create amazing things, I think. And I, I, I personally love the diversity of the United States, especially if you're in places like Los Angeles or New York or Miami. Um, I think there's a lot of things you can learn from moving around different cultures. And it's easier to do here than in Europe, okay. I think. And how do you like to be creative, Ace? What's my creative outlet? Is that what you're asking yes. me? What is your creative outlet? <laughs> I see. So YouTube is really like my creative outlet. It's also what I want my next business to be. And um, it gives me the opportunity to not only share my thoughts, but to build community around my thoughts and bring in thought leaders or people who just have a different approach, have seen life through a different lens or angle. I can bring those people onto my YouTube channel and I can share my personal thoughts. And I love that, right? That's from having been a rapper to now being able to share thoughts and content with an audience, which is very similar in many ways. Um, I like it. Okay. You have a corporate job and yet you still have time or you make time for your health and your passion and growing mm -hmm. this YouTube channel. How do you do that? Well, again, like I know what my priorities are and I try to create pockets of time that other people may not have. So for example, I don't know if you guys know what factor meals are, but I've used that company and they deliver meals to my house so that I don't need to cook during the week for lunch. I don't mind making my dinner because typically speaking, I toss together a salad or something like that, which is easy and quick. But um, there are so many ways we can outsource if we have a little bit of money some of these tasks like cooking or cleaning my house, that's one. But I think really 
TV and getting lost in social media can be such a huge time suck. And I do very little of both. The most time I spend with social media is posting my own things if I post them myself. And so I do believe I get some time back. And so people say, well, you're even able to work out. I don't think workouts need to be that long. I work out three, sometimes four, four times a week, but always two times. And my workouts are typically speaking between 30 and 45 minutes, which is not very much time. My gym is on my walk to work. And so I don't need to commute. I just need to have my back packed and ready. And even for that, I have a checklist. So there's a lot of tasks that I think can be streamlined if you have a little bit of income to dedicate it to it, right? And now, you know, people may say, well, you know, I don't have any income. But then when you look at maybe your liquor cabinet and you see like, you know, a bunch of bottles of liquor there, then you can say, well, maybe I don't want to do this, but I dedicate. So all I'm saying, I'm giving you this as an example. Now, or I'm not, Starbucks. And I, or Starbucks. I'm not trying to chastise here. I'm just saying like, if you look deep enough, you'll probably find something that you can sell or a habit that you can reduce to, you know, do whatever is meaningful to you, be that working out, spending more time with your kids, or creating content, you know, really. What what irks me the most is when people say, I don't have time. All that means is it's not my priority. I sometimes feel people are not 100% honest with themselves when they say, I don't have time. Because we all have the same amount of time. And if you say, I don't have time, you give power to whoever runs your planner or your calendar, right? I think it's much more meaningful to say it's not my priority to do this right now. And that way you program yourself into what are my priorities, right? So eat or people think they need TV or alcohol or whatever that may be as a way to decompress. But we know now or today that there are so many more healthy methods of doing that. So instead of sitting down and drinking a glass of red wine, if you care about your friends, just invite them for a walk out. Go walk. I have a guy I do push-ups with once or twice a month here at the waterfront. And it's, it's time that we can spend together and doing a healthy habit. So sometimes stacking these healthy habits together or things that are important to you... It, is easier than you think it is. And that's one. And then two, I wanted, wanted to also say a friend of mine who's a highly successful real estate agent operates by the motto of a person should be able to look at your calendar and tell you what your purpose is. So if you're saying, I don't have time, maybe look at your calendar and see if that lack of time that you dedicate to other things is aligned with where you want to be in life. And if it's not, maybe give it some thought how there are small things you can change, right? So those things are personal, helpful hacks to me at least. And that's how I find time in my day to do all of the things that I do. Um, no, what gets me out in the morning is this kind of wanting to have an impact in life, right? Like wanting to live a little freer, connect with the people I like to connect with, spending more time with my kids, being able to mentor them better and more efficiently, like knowledge acquiring, knowledge acquiring financial and emotional freedom. Those are the things that get me out of bed. And again, like I love my friends. Without my friends, I wouldn't be here where I am. And also I love my kids. They contribute in a, sa in a similar but different manner to my to my drive, right? So those are the things I want to get out of bed for. I want to make my circle of friends. I want to enhance the life of my circle of friends and really of my community as well. So that's what I what I wake up for. And tell me about this passion you have for personal development. Mm. So I always ended up mentoring people at a very young age when it was basketball and I started playing in like the top or the elite players of my city Hamburg. And then, then I moved on to the youth national team. I always had kids waiting for me after school to show them basketball. And that's how things started. Then 
With hip hop came this, with my first real estate transactions came people who wanted to be mentored. And now it's people from all walks of life. So for me, I've always tried to improve a little bit on what I'm doing because I don't, you know, come from wealth. I come from a single uh, mom who didn't have good financial habits. And as a result, life wasn't always easy. I think we struggled quite a bit, actually. And my mother made decisions based on her financial situation that weren't conducive to taking care of her kids the way she could have taken care of us had money not been an issue, if it makes any sense. Yes. And so I think wealth, financial wealth at least, not spiritual wealth, but financial wealth, acquiring that is a process. And so... I became interested in how to do that. And so personal development is not about generating financial wealth, but it's about living better. And money gives us a tool to live more in line with what we want to do if we use it wisely. That's the big caveat, right? If we go and go out and buy $3,000 purses and Lambos and we are not already financially independent then those are decisions that are working against our long-term goals if financial independence then is one of our long-term goals if that makes sense it makes perfect sense mm -hmm. so is there anything else you would like to add and share with the audience i mean first of all it's super cool to be here thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch this um like I said, I do YouTube, I do personal development. A lot of the things that I shared here, I'm sharing also on my channel. I would like and like to encourage your audience to really take some time and look at, you know, look at your goals and figure out if what you're doing on a day to day basis is helping you progress toward that goal. And that's such a it sounds like millennial kitsch, right? It's not about the goal. It's about the way. And it sounds it sounds a bit kitschy, but I truly think the goal is your North Star and your way will never be a straight line. I mean, you've experienced that yourself. There's always ups and downs when you're trying to do something where you don't have a blueprint for or that's a little bit outside of the regular box in which everybody else operates. So I would encourage your audience to really use these new tools and technologies that we have like the internet and smartphones to do some digging and also use traditional resources like like your public library system where you can really get books for free and rent them out. Um, use these resources and talk to smart people and see if you're tracking correctly, right? In what area that ever may be, if that's fitness, if that's finance, if that's love. There are mentors out there and just asking a question, hey, could you sit down with me for 10, 15 minutes for coffee can be such a game changer. So you know, taking one step in the right direction that is aligned with your guys' goals, I think uh, that's what I would like to impart you with or leave you with. And um, that's just one thing that went through my mind. I love it. Thank you so much, Ace. You've been wonderful. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much for the opportunity for letting me be here. It was super nice meeting you at VidCon. And thank you for... Um, for coming down here as well and filming this with me. I'm 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 happy to do a follow up or a backup or be a resource in any way I can be helpful to you and your audience.